Welcome, modern day mystics, fellow true seekers, James and Justin, back again with another reaction video. It has been a long time since we have reacted to a Mohan video, and he's got this new one which I saw. I was like, we gotta react to this because it sounds cool. It's called Achintya, the greatest Hindu god you've never heard of before. <gasps> yeah, so, uh, yeah. A new god? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> a new god shows up. New contender. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, guys, we won't keep you waiting. Let's get into it. Hey guys. Hey guys. I'm going into a forbidden temple in Bali. As you can see, it says closed okay. and no one is actually allowed inside but i want to show you a very strange what? god called achintya and i will show you a close-up of this and you can tell me what you think of it i will bet you that most of you have never ever seen such a strange depiction look no. at the extremities and the other areas what are those things projecting out of him. Are they tridents coming out of his body? 99% of foreigners and most Hindus living outside Bali do not even know that such a Hindu god exists. But this is a supreme god in most Hindu temples of Bali. But maybe this is just an exception, an anomaly carved in one temple and I'm blowing this out of proportion, right? No, let me take you to another Hindu temple in Bali. This is a different temple and let me climb up the main tower. This is the supreme god, guys. This is the supreme god in Bali, Achintya. And nobody knows about this in India, but Balinese believe that the supreme god of Hinduism is Achintya, which is this god. He looks like a normal god, but if you look here, you can see this Crutch. trident symbol. So in his ears, he has that the the trident in his ears and his shoulders. He has a trident in his elbows. He has a trident here. He has a trident here. He has a trident. <laughs> he's going out of his way to not point to the crotchal region <laughs> yeah I, he's got a trident there too i know i guess maybe it's supposed to like symbolize the importance of all the intersecting facets of the human extremities like there's a reason for it i'm sure he's going to get into it why that's important but yeah like it's every extremity you I gotta like you, to you gotta out, put it somewhere you gotta put it on everything i just like to point out awkward things <laughs> that that's like he's got tried in here and here and here and here it's like there's one area you're not pointing to that i've noticed to try to uh, also emerging from sure okay. on go. the left too he has a trident so anything <laughs> that's <laughs> that has a pointed edge he has a trident except for his hand maybe but this is, this is the supreme god in Bali. This is called Achintya. This is what we're trying to find. Because it, normally in Hinduism, the supreme god is either Shiva or Shakti or the three murtis, Shiva, Vishnu, and Brahma. But in Bali, they believe that the supreme god is Achintya. And we can see that this is at the topmost level, right? I, I'll show you the other chambers. But here you can see this god seated on this chair so it looks almost invisible right when you see it from here it looks kind of invisible but when you climb up when you when we climb up like this then we finally see achintya and you can see all these offerings this is the offerings of coconut coconut so someone's got eggs that. You can see eggs, eggs being offered, coconut being offered to the god Achintya. Okay. So that's the, uh, so that is what is so unique about this temple because it shows Achintya, the supreme god. Okay. 
from the ground level of the temple, you cannot see Achintya. It's not accessible to common mm -hmm. people. Some Balinese people say you have to attain spiritual enlightenment to see and touch Achintya. And again, remember that Achintya was not accessible in that temple as well. Some say it's an esoteric symbol of a secret society. Now, let's talk about the elephant in the room. What is this? Why is it carved here in this fashion? What could this possibly mean? Some say these are the three prongs of the trident of Shiva. Shiva is a supreme Hindu god and he's usually shown carrying a trident. This represents three functions of God, generation, operation, and destruction. This is why he's called God. And in Hinduism, there are three separate gods dedicated to these functions. Brahma, the generator, Vishnu, the operator, and Shiva, the destroyer. In many Hindu temples, you'll see G-O-D, or God, side by side. Is this why we see the trident Attack. So a couple of things. One thing, congratulations if you come across this video. I guess yeah. every all of us, we made it. We're all enlightened if we're because <laughs> this was we previously not known knowledge. Some of you maybe have known about this for a long time, but access to new, you know, file. Yeah. D d d d d d. We, we now have access to understanding this God. But then I thought about that staple of what he was saying of God, God the generator, the operator, and the destroyer. And I'm like, yeah. what if we just as God as gods decided we wanted to discard the word god and be like why can't it be generator operator and everlaster or something like that yeah just to have a new word yeah go i'm sure you could um and there's probably some already out there that like yourself or myself have started kind of like taking on some of these ideas yeah. and, and 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 letting them flow out there to me, it seems like uh, because a lot of people harp on Hinduism because of the polytheistic nature of it. But this Achintya seems to be trying to unify it because Achintya seems to be the oneness of all three of them. Yeah. So you're, I, what I'm recognizing here is some type of a three in one deity being yes. that is like a unifying aspect yeah, here. For sure. Yeah. Which is really interesting. But again... I'm you and me are both new to this, so there's going to be some ignorance here. So, oh yeah, yeah and like, but but this is not the first time we've yeah, reacted yeah. to enough stuff to to recognize this characteristic of the gods, which yeah, is yeah. The, or this characteristic of the divine, which is this element at the end that comes to a destruction. Yeah. You know, and I think that that, that a lot in a lot of ways reflects our perspective as human beings. You know, when we look at life, when we go through all these phases and we incarnate, you know, we get fat, get skinny, get older. Yeah. And then we face death one day. And we're like, well, you know, then if we're reflected in the divine, even the universe is going to face death one day. So there's a destroyer. Yeah. There is a destroyer, you know, that that comes one day. But if we are reflected in the divine and we have some capacity to be God like ourselves, just take that bull by the horns and be like, no, I don't want this. Forget it then. Just change it. <laughs> Let's think of things in terms of everlasting. And I don't mean, you know, going into heaven and walking on bricks of gold, unless you want to, I yeah. suppose. I'm just trying to shake yeah. loose and the idea. And there's probably also a part of this that even leads to what you're, exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. I'm, I'm suspecting that within, because wouldn't that be kind of like the nirvanic nature of mm -hmm. things? That's know, eventually, or karma. Depends on the mood thing, I'm in. One thing to one thing. It depends on the mood I'm in. Sometimes the idea of being impermanent is like, oh, thank God we're impermanent. Yeah, yeah. And then another day you're like, life's good. Why can't it last forever and ever and ever? Yeah. It depends on the damn mood you're in. Yeah. So, you know, maybe one day be a Hindu and the next day be a Christian and the next day be a... Why can't you switch religions? Why can't you pick... Because you can't. Yeah. And then tomorrow will be this other thing and learn a little bit of more. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, back to the video. Yeah. Back to grounding reality. That's to Achintya's body to show that he performs all these functions. But the Hindus of Bali are very advanced in spirituality and esoteric knowledge. They've placed the symbol not only on Achintya, but they've also secretly carved it in many places. 
And you can say, Praveen, you say this, but you don't show these hidden symbols. Yes, because they're supposed to be hidden. I will show you a little peek. In a previous video, I showed you a bicycle carved in a Balinese temple. But if you looked at the front wheel, this symbol is actually placed on this knot. Not just one, but in three places on the bulges of the knot. But even if you had watched that video, you would have never observed this detail. Only one in a million would notice this. And believe it or not, you will see the symbol appear in more places. Even in the same video, not to mention the other temples I've shown you. But again, they're hidden for a reason. I'm not supposed to explain them because you don't find these symbols unless you really open your mind. And I showed you this statue before. Did you notice this wheel? Again, did you see that it also has tridents attached? Is it connected to this bicycle wheel? A deeper look into this hidden symbol reveals profound ancient knowledge. This chakra is often referred to as the Kala Chakra, meaning the wheel of time. Kala is the god of time and he's also in charge of three aspects, the past, the present, and the future. And you will notice that the center prong representing the present is straight while the past and future are shown twisted because the past and the future are twisted concepts. They do not actually exist in reality. In reality, only the present exists. The past only exists in your mind as a memory and the future only exists in your mind as a piece of imagination. But at least the present is real, right? Is it? Now think about it. What does the present mean? It varies according to the individual. Does it mean this month? Does present mean this hour, this minute, or the present just this second? Is it real? Because that second is already gone and now you're in a new present. Time is so mysterious and this is why they call him Achintya. Achintya in Sanskrit means inconceivable or unimaginable. And this is why ancient Hinduism and Buddhism depicted time as a wheel, because this wheel never stops, right? Time stops for nobody and it's so elusive. No matter who you are, how rich you are, how powerful you are, your time on earth will be over. This is why Kala is not only the god of time, he's also the god of death. So Kala is all powerful in a sense. This is the true god. This is why you see the symbol Kala with the past, present, and future. And notice how that would be intertwined with generation, operation, and destruction of life. I hope you have understood why Achintya is the most powerful Hindu god. And I think his features are so exotic and fabulous, it's only a matter of time before Achintya becomes famous in India too. I hope you like this video. I am Praveen Mohan. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Well done. First of all, yeah, Praveen videos are fascinating. Every single one I watch, you know, I like the way he kind of tries to get you to think differently. We even asked like questions out there like, does sometimes new gods show up? Do new gods emerge in an order? We could be seeing the birth of a new god rising. I, I swear, like, I'm a sucker for the belief in uh, the Mandela effect. Yeah. That's like, what? That was not how it was. Like, just this morning, 
my partner was telling me that Shangri-La is a modern concept. It was developed in like the 1930s. Mm -hmm. I was like, I swear I've looked at art that was like ancient depictions of Shangri-La. And it's like, no, it was based on a fictitious story. And it started in like the 1930s or something. Yeah. I looked it up. I'm like, that's not... It, reality's changed then. You know what I mean? Like, so yeah, I would get used to the idea of new gods and, oh, this has been here for thousands of years. It's like, what? What, what? the heck? What? Yeah. Yeah. Because anything can happen in this wacky uh, reality. It's beautiful. That's why, I, that's why I'm open not to beat, you know, not to go on and on about yeah, it. Yeah, but yeah. I'm like, stretch the limits. Stretch the limits of manifestation. And maybe one day you could be like, let's have a more and more beautiful, cultivated, co manifested reality where. Even the characteristics of God. Maybe we'll find it one day that what the things we thought were horrible that we kind of had to deal with. Like, I guess God's always got this part that we got to deal with. Maybe yeah. one day you'll realize that it's not as we thought it was and it actually means something good. Yeah. Yeah. No, I we think... We manifest hard enough. A lot of people could get on board for what you're talking about here. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this, found this as fascinating as we did. If you did, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, share this with a friend, and everyone until next time, stay spiritual. spiritual.